Hi, I'm Henry Melcher with the Architects newspaper. I'm currently on the north branch of the Chicago River with Jeannie Gang. We're visiting her WMS boathouse and also kayaking along the north branch. So Rahm Emanuel commissioned four boathouses along the rivers. Um, how did you guys get involved with that project? Um, we had just finished writing this book and editing some interviews about the riverways. And, and you know, basically the, the river was reversed uh, here uh, around the turn of the century to save the Chicago drinking water. Instead of the river emptying into the lake, engineering-wise, we reversed that to take the lake water and, and move it into the river system. So after we uh, wrote the book and had conversations about this future use of the river, we were contacted by the city to, to think about providing access to it. As a designer, how did you kind of begin to conceptualize a boathouse on the river? What are some of like, the beginning things that you want to do with that mm -hmm. type of project? Well, we wanted to make something that was attractive and dynamic because the river, like I said before, wasn't being used so much. So it needed to be something that would embody the activity that we hope to see in the future for the river. A boathouse is a very functional building, so it had to be pretty straight up, but we wanted to still capture some of that energy. The design is based on rowers, is that right? And how people yeah. row? I mean, we, we were trying to find something that was active, dynamic, and we, we took those stop motion pictures, Edward Moybridge. But then we looked at what the oar is actually doing and translated that motion into kind of a roof form, which is these M's and V's that um, alternate, and in between the, the structure, warps to connect them. So it did give this kind of lively dynamism to the roof and also allows light to come in in the colder months and heat up the slab below the um, boat storage. How do you incorporate nature into your work? Not, not just green building technologies and lead beyond that. It goes so far beyond that. I mean, it's, it's a total way of thinking. Like, how are things connected? How do they reinforce each other? And, and so really interested in connectivity between the culture of a place. So a lot of times with organizations that we're working with, we're trying to help the organization understand their own DNA, if you will, and then project that into how they can become something new in the future. When you get a new project, whether it's a competition or you're commissioned to do something, what do you do day well, one? I think day one, we're we're defining what, what are the things that are appealing about the project, what can they say to the broader scope of architecture and urban development. So we try to like dig into the many different facets. We would be researching the site, we would be looking at historical references, and try to keep the design, the formal approach, suppressed a little bit in the beginning, just so that you can absorb. And then, and then at some point, you turn off that absorption and just make stuff. My philosophy is that all the knowledge that you gain is going to be stored up in the back of the head and like come out through the things that you make. So Studio Gang is doing projects everywhere it seems these days. Are you concerned about falling into a familiar pattern or doing or the quality of work dipping? You know we spent a lot of time figuring out our structure and um, we actually designed our structure in a very organic way as well. So we spent a lot of time thinking about how can we grow and still keep our culture and still keep our approach to design. So in itself, that was like a, a design project. And we, we did that kind of during the downturn. So we were able to have that structure in place so we could move ahead and let ourselves grow and be more impactful, but still, you know, keep our culture and our process. How would you describe Studio Gang's style? And do you think there is a danger in firms having a very specific or familiar style. We're, our work is so varied in scale that there's going to be different kinds of responses to that. Like you can't say a boathouse is going to be the same style as a tall building, you know. So there's there's a big scale difference there. But I think the sensibility is to try to understand what really makes the project resonate, but also there's a real attention to the materiality. If you see a wood project, it's going to read like a wood, you know, like the Lincoln Park Zoo Pavilion or. If you see steel, it's going to read like a steel structure, like the boathouses here, um, that each material is doing what it does best. So Aqua Tower definitely put Studio Gang kind of on the international architectural radar, but you also do a ton of public projects. Are these projects you seek out? Are they projects you like more than condo buildings? Or How do you kind of conceptualize your role in the public realm of Chicago and elsewhere? We look at projects that are interesting to us, you know, as a collective at Studio Gang, and um, things that are going to have a positive impact on our own, <laughs> our own lives, which, which are community projects around us, and things that are going to help address issues that we face in Chicago. We kind of like focus in on those through public projects, and then hopefully they will help us to address things that are 
more global in nature.